Hi everyone, welcome in. This is Julie Max and the Main Stamper and I am here for your Thursday at 3 card inspiration. Today we have a fun card. On Thursdays we take a little bit of time to have fun. My Monday night classes are usually about an hour long and I do three cards and they're all based on a bundle. And I sometimes carry the theme into Thursday, but Thursdays are quick, short, and very sweet. And it's always fun too. And today we have a really awesome card. Now we are, we are continuing with the beautiful Countryside Inn designer series paper. All of these papers, there's so many papers. I think there's 13 paper packs right now. Um, on sale, 15% off the entire month of June. Now, okay, I know what you're thinking. It's June 1st. I have 29 more days to shop for designer series paper and get a discount. Yes, you do. But please remember that some of them may go out of stock. So if you have a favorite pattern, you might want to get on earlier rather than later, because if your pattern runs out and the month runs out, then you don't get the deal, right? So anyway, we are still working with Countryside Inn. We're still working with Lasting Joy. I did that during my card class on Monday, but this is a fun fold. So you're looking at the front of this and you're like, what's so, I mean, it's pretty, but what's unusual? Well, it's unusual when you open it. It's a double, what is this called? Double decker pop-out card. So it's got the Z fold to it, but it's also got a little, I'm trying to get into the angle here, a little tunnel in the middle here. So it's got a lot of dimension and depth and it's, it's, it looks like a wow card and it's actually pretty easy. So this is our fun card for today. Um, just checking to see, um, let me know if you're watching, you can hear me, make sure my volume is good here. Um, and this card was inspired by a fellow demonstrator, Susan Campfield. She did um, a demonstration on this card. I grabbed the recipe from her and I copied and selectively edited what she did because basically she's using the same products that I was using on Monday. So um, mine is a little bit simpler. I'll talk to you a little bit about how she changed hers up and what makes mine a little bit different as well. So, okay, I'm gonna pop over to my workspace. I see maybe a couple people maybe watching, maybe not, but um, I will check back in and make sure that we are actually live and in the right space. Let's transition over and we're gonna talk a little bit more about this beautiful card. You've got the card recipe uh, in your email uh, newsletter today. So you'll have this to print. You'll have all of the dimensions, the supplies I use, the directions, a couple of pictures here to help you out as you're assembling. Um, but you can get all this information from this video too. Now, if you're thinking, wow, it does look kind of familiar. Here's one of our cards from Monday. Here's another card from Monday, another card from Monday. So yes, they do have like the right, the same feel. This was my color swap that I did on Wednesday over on Positive Paper Crafters. So I, you know, like to change it up once, once in the middle of the week, I go from a different color to a different color. So this was our color swap. Uh, you guys really enjoyed the blue. So I'm glad that you're loving the blues. These cards are part of my mega class. We're going to be continuing um, next Monday on June 5th with more cards, more designs using these papers, these dies, the stamp set, the whole thing, right? So I just wanted to share with you that there's not a lot that you need to create this fun wow card, right? So I'm going to just go through the basics here. We have a um, half a sheet of thick white cardstock. So this is your basic, you know, you're making an A2 size card. We're going to fold this in a Z fold pattern way. You have um, a paper that is design series paper that's four by five and a quarter. This is your, your first matted layer, typically on a card. On this card, it's gonna go on the inside, so you can see where it is here. We have two panels that are embossed with the Countryside Blossoms embossing folder. And what's really fun about this folder, and as I was embossing, is I wanted to point this out, if I can find my embossing folder here. Countryside Blossoms embossing folder. So in the middle of this folder, I don't know if it's gonna be able to show really well, there is a kind of like an oval pattern here with a flower. Well, let's pretend this is the embossing folder. Right, so right here in the middle, oval pattern with the flower, right? So as I lined these two papers up side by side in my embossing folder, of course I took advantage of this little black line that's up at the bottom of the Stampin' Up! embossing folder so I can make sure they were straight. And I lined them up right in the middle so that when I cut my papers um, in half here, I have half of the, um, the embossed, and it's really hard to see on once you get it assembled, but let me tell you, I was really excited about it because I thought it was really cool. So basically, I'm sending these onto my 
my um, my card base with a half a circle here and a half a circle here and I'm gonna line them up this way when I put this together I thought that was just really cool so you can kind of imagine other things you can do with this embossing folder we have a simple white layer for the inside these really are the pieces for outside our front pieces I just kind of have them pushed together so you can see these are the pieces we have here we got knight of navy a little bit of whisper white some more designer paper and i have a nice, a nice little piece of blue there as well this is our pop-up mechanism mechanism this is the magic of our card this is this little tunnel piece that's inside and this is this is the whole thing that makes this card really cool just one little piece of paper so that that's what we've got here for a card kit there's really not a lot involved which is fantastic so i'm going to check messages one more time on this video make sure maybe somebody might be watching and commenting by now so i can see that i am really good to go hi Lori and jess yes i love this paper so much thank you for commenting so i can make sure that i'm good to go here all right, let's do our card base. So our card base, we're gonna score this at two and an eighth, four and a quarter. So it may sound tricky, but it's really not. So let's do two and an eighth first. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what does this really mean, two and an eighth, four and a quarter. So you know when you have your card base and you score it or you fold it in half at four and a quarter, you just scored an A2 size card, right? You've just folded it in half. And the reality is if you didn't wanna do that, you wouldn't even have to do this part. You can just, you know, fold this over like you normally would a card base and you've got it done. And then the next thing you would do is you take your front flap. Now I have a crease here because I did score mine and you're just going to fold this backwards. It's that simple. So if you are a little bit nervous about two and an eighth, four and a quarter, I don't know if I can score this. You're just making a Z fold with your card base. So you basically scored it in half flip the front over in half and you've got these two panels right here and you've got what's the inside of our card um our card right here so we're just gonna adhere some panels right now because easy i mean this card really it's amazingly easy but it's so um awesomely wowy now i want you to keep in mind of course if you don't want to use blue papers you don't want to use these stamps you could use whatever you have you can definitely swap some things out so this is our designer series paper panel it's going on basically what would be the inside of the card. So if this was the card front uh, close, this is the inside panel. And then we're gonna take those little um, embossed pieces that I talked about earlier, and they're gonna fit right on here. So they're gonna go right here, one on each side. And again, I'm gonna keep that little embossed center toward the middle so that when it's, so when I look at it right now, it just makes me feel cohesively happy. I guess that's where I'm gonna go with that. Um, I just thought that was really cool. And I'm, I may, want to do a future card that actually kind of showcases this split panel look it is just so awesome and i don't know if i can lift it up if the camera will even capture that but basically this is the middle right here so it's cut down and it's also separated too so it's just really really cool and i love the white on white look so classy and pretty so we have the bones of our card really simple right let's do um let's do our pop-up mechanism and then we'll do our stamping and final assembly that's how quick this is so we're going to bring the trimmer back in now this is a piece of paper that is two let me make sure i've got my directions here two and a quarter by three so the three inch side is where we're going to do all of our scoring so here's our three inch side we're going to put this in our trimmer um, and we are going to score this along the three inch side at three quarters so I'm just gonna bring this over to the three quarter mark and score up. Then I'm gonna move it over to one and a half. And that's my dog bumping into my trash can under my desk as she gets snuggled in for the rest of the video. And then we're gonna move from the one and a half to two and a quarter. So three score marks on this paper. And then I'm gonna show you what we have. We basically have um, a piece of paper that has four even score lines in it. So I don't know if you can see where the score lines are, but the first score line right here, if you were to score this in half, um, you've got two score lines here that are gonna come forward. So the tricky thing here, what we wanna do is when we fold our flaps forward, we're kind of making a gate fold. So I'm gonna fold these two forward. Oh, it's perfect. You wanna have a little bit of a gapped opening. You don't want your gate fold to actually crisscross over each other so there is actually like kind of a a bit of a gap right here and that's what that's awesome this back crease right here 
is just going to help us to line up this paper, which is going to form our pop-up mechanism. So if I unfold this and kind of form this into like a little tunnel or a tube, um, which it doesn't want to bend that way right now, but this is what it's going to look like on our card, and it's going to perform as the pop-up piece inside. So you can see that maybe inside there. All right, so let's talk about how we get this onto here to make it pop up. So this again, this is kind of like a gatefold opening. It comes open like this. We've got the crease in the back. We're gonna use tear and tape because I love the tear and tape. So we're gonna put two sections of tear and tape on here. So again, my little gatefold is gonna open this way. I'm gonna put the tear and tape kind of close to the, the, the fold here. So kind of close to this edge. And again, some more over here. Again, close to this edge not close to where the gates meet, right? So they're on the farthest end out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up. So it's gonna come down onto our card like this. So it's gonna be taped right here. And we're going to use this middle crease that we have, and we're gonna line it up with the middle fold, this middle crease right here in our card. So let me grab out my handy dandy tool here to get my tear and tape off, a little backing. And we're going to pop this onto here, and we are going to then have the pop-up mechanism. It's, it's really cool. Okay, so here we go. We got that on there. So again, I'm just going to, because I don't have anything here on either end, it's, it's easier to hold it kind of like at the top or the bottom. Obviously, the sides are going to be sticky. So again, we're going to line up that crease. We're going to find the middle point or so, right? And we're basically just lining up the two lines as best we can and we're going to push down the tape and the tape is going to stick to either side and when we close it up just like that we have that little pop-up tunnel in there so hopefully you can see that in there and then as we open it it provides us that little popping mechanism and that just it blows my mind that you can do something so cool with the smallest amount of paper all right, let's move on to some stamping because really that's pretty much all we have left other than this final assembly. Now there are still some tips and tricks, so don't go away yet. We have to talk about how we're gonna get this piece into here and make that work out well. I'm looking at this piece and thinking, this is too big. Is this too big? Did I cut this too big? I did, I cut it too big. Let me see my recipe. Oh my gosh, we're having a repeat of like two weeks ago when I had the wrong directions. My white middle layer should be three by four and a half. Is this not three? It is certainly not, it's three and a half. We're gonna do a, a paper trim here. This must be my new, my new Thursday show. Welcome to my new Thursday show where I totally mess up a measurement and I thought I had this down today. I, I thought for sure I'd do this without any problems at all. All right, now as I'm looking, this is going to fit in here much nicer. So this is how it's going to look much better. So if you're ever working with your papers and you're like, wow, that just doesn't look right, then check your directions and um, maybe it's not right because sometimes uh, my directions are correct. I cut it wrong. So I just, I totally trimmed that wrong. All right, we're bringing in Lasting Joy again. And again, I'm using Made the Years Ahead Be Filled with Lasting Joy and Birthday Wishes. I used them also earlier in the week um, as well. So this is going to be our inside sentiment. May the years ahead be filled with lasting joy. And when I um, stamped this on Monday, I was talking about, I feel like I've got ink on my fingers and it's transferring. I was talking about this would be a great graduation card, maybe a retirement card, uh, a wedding card. I didn't even think about birthday card, right? Because when you have a birthday, you wanna have more birthdays. So there's that one. We're gonna go ahead and stamp the front one with birthday wishes. And I'm gonna bring in my card here so I can kind of just see where I put this. I put this toward the top. And if you see these beautiful little blue flowers on there, that was not technically my idea at the beginning. That actually covered up ink smudges. I had ink smudge problems. So I'm, I brought in some flowers to cover up my ink smudges and then I really liked it. So I'm going to repeat. And after I covered up my ink smudge, but with a flower, of, um, I put in little, the rhinestones in there and that kind of worked out well too. So as it's kind of a hot and humid day, uh, it's, it's in the 90s here in Maine today, it's crazy warm. Um, the ink takes a little bit longer to dry. Don't have my AC in my window yet, so we're just kind of 
sweating long here. We're waiting for the weekend to come and some cooler temperatures. We're actually only supposed to be in the 60s this weekend, and that sounds much nicer for um, card making in an upstairs craft room. So Susan Campfield, again, she made some really gorgeous cards, um, and you definitely want to check them out. She did all kinds of different patterns. She had a lot of fun with this. Um, she created some die cuts to go on the bottom. So she didn't put designer series paper on the bottom like I'm doing. I'm doing a shortcut card. I'm doing the, I don't have a lot of time. I don't, I don't want to die cut things. I don't want to punch things. I'm just going to decorate with some cardstock and some pretty paper and make it beautiful. She did die cuts on the bottom and, and it was really very lovely. So there are so many different ways that you can create these kinds of cards. So let's talk about our final assembly here. We have to get this piece right here hooked up to our pop-up piece. So I'm going to bring in again my tear and tape and I'm gonna put some right here on the left side of my little pop-up piece. So if I pop it over, this is the front facing one as you're looking down at it. And we are going to line up the inside piece on our pop-up mechanism so that this inside piece has some lift and it pops open when you open it. Now what you wanna do here is you don't wanna go all the way, I'm gonna open this up and see if we can kinda of look at it. Um, it may be hard, it's white and white, but you don't wanna come all the way to the edge of it. You wanna leave like a small 16th of an inch or so of, of space because you don't want the edge of your, um, your paper here to rub the wrong way. So I'm just trying to make sure I have a little bit of room here, kinda of like I can see a little bit of paper from my mechanism. And I'm also trying to make sure I have it on here um, at least straight, right? Kind of straight. Like I probably could have put this down a little bit farther, but it doesn't look horrible the way that it is. So now this is on here. So when I close it this way, it's beautiful. So that's my little pop-up piece. Now we're going to put on this piece. And again, we're going to be very careful with our tear and tape. We're going to mount this on here so that we're only gluing right here. Cause this piece, this piece right here, it needs to be no adhesive. You don't want to glue it closed. We also wanna make sure when we put this on here that we're taking advantage of this white layering mat behind it. So I wanna line this up so it looks like it's a cohesive, you know, a nice little mat behind there as well. So I need tape right here on my piece of cardstock. I'm gonna look one more time. This is like that look twice, tape once kind of a deal, right? You wanna make sure you got it, like you're doing the right side. Now at this point it, with tear and tape, if I had the wrong side, I mean, you'd see the tear and tape, but it's not the end of the world. I haven't taken the sticky part off yet. So we're going to line that up. I'm going to bring my little tool back in and we're going to get this over here so we can line this up. Now, again, you can, you can use glue or adhesive um, of your choice. I like the tear and tape because it's really strong and also, um, it holds better, especially with cards that move. So when I put this down, I'm gonna, so the tape is here, I'm gonna keep this end cocked up a little bit. I'm not gonna put this end down first. I'm actually gonna kind of play with this edge over here to make sure this is where I want it to be, kind of matting that along. And when I'm happy with it, I'm gonna bring my fingers in to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna come in and push down this taped edge over here. Oh, it's so pretty. Isn't that the awesomest card? I mean, like, and it opens flat enough that you could sign it here and put your, you know, a little something here as well. And if you're careful and you don't come too far over, when it's in a closed position, no one will see anything until they open it up. And if you really didn't want to um, write on this piece, because it's really nice, I mean, it's hard to see it now, but when it stands up, it has a really great stance. You can also use the back. You could, if you have a colorful base, you could put another white piece on the back and you could even stamp something more, add your well wishes there. The last thing we need is some bling because of course we need bling, right? So I'm gonna bring in some of these little rhinestones. I'm gonna use this piece right here. And these, these small ones that I have left at the top, they come in different sizes, these little rhinestones. I tend to use um, the bigger ones up first for some reason. And um, I always just have a lot of little ones left over, but these little guys are perfect for the insides of these flowers. And I love the silver and white and blue together. Um, so that is a look at our fun fold card today. I'm gonna pop back over and check out messages. Yeah, Lori, this is a great way to add texture with embossing. I love doing that. Let's see, we got Rhonda. Hi Rhonda, hi Jackie. 
Uh, thank you so much for the love on this card today. This was a pretty quick one too. I also really love easy fun folds. I am not one that um, wants to tackle a fun fold card that is like probably um, made in 85 simple steps. Like that's way too much for me. I want something that's quick and easy. Uh, that I feel confident that I'm going to make a, a really great project with. And um, I've tried some tricky fun folds before and, and they don't line up. And then I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, this is garbage. I wasted my time. But anyway, um, fun folds that are easy are definitely the best. I'm glad you guys enjoyed this. So thanks for joining me for our fun fold. Um, if you are still loving these whites and blues, this designer series paper, make sure you come over uh, to the Main Stamper Facebook page Monday at eight o'clock. We're going to be doing mega class part two. We're going to have more of these beautiful cards but they're going to be different so I'm just going to have just so many more things to share with you on this all right well I appreciate your time today I, I hope that I've inspired you to um to try this project out it really is pretty simple and wow cards are they're going to make you guys look like geniuses you guys are so good all right that's it for me I will um, answer any questions in the comments if you have them and otherwise stay inspired create something beautiful share the love bye everybody